This is powerful. Posterity. We're going to change your life and set you free. How many of you believe you can change? Let me hear you say yeah. 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 How many of you want to change? Yeah. Me. Why? What's wrong with you? Everything. Uh, you can always evolve. Life is evolution. It's continued evolution. When you keep working, have you ever seen a, sm a snow driven field? Now you're from Southern Cal, probably not, I don't know. Any of you ever seen a snow driven field? Beautiful, fresh, crystalline snowflakes oh, yeah. laying on an open field, right? Right, Zoomers, I see you, yeah, Ooh. right? Okay, and then you walk on it. And now there's footsteps on it, right? Okay, now you walk on it again and you walk on it again. What if you keep walking that same path again and again and again and there's grass underneath it and then there's soil underneath it? What eventually happens to that path? It gets worn down. And it turns to what? Mud. It turns to mud. It starts to look really nappy and nasty and it's all worn out. You guys have seen that before, maybe in a movie, maybe in a TV show, maybe in real life, right? Yes? Yes. Come on, I need you. I'm teaching a powerful message for you guys here. This is for everybody. We're recording this. Because the question keeps coming up about you guys not understanding what an artist adventure is really all about <clears throat> and the importance of artist adventures. And that's what I'm going to drive home to you guys in the next 20 minutes. I am giving a TED Talk on artist adventures and the importance of doing them. Now, why do these artist adventures? First of all, what the heck it is, what is it that we're doing? We're actors, right? We're actors. What is an actor? Somebody that wants to be famous and I want to win an Academy Award and everybody looks at me and says, yeah, you're the person. Yeah, that's in there. And we want that stuff somewhere inside you or you would be a writer <laughs> and then you might still want it. But an actor is the human power plant to create interesting characters. If you're with me, let me hear you say, yeah. 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 All right, Zoomers, I'm watching your lips, right? We're the human power plant. Now, have any of you ever had an instrument, anything, maybe your phone, maybe you drive one that's powered by electricity, yes, that you yeah. don't plug in a battery, right? A battery. And have you ever used that thing where the battery started wearing down? And it starts to... I'm a yeah. You have to really help it along when it doesn't have power, right? You guys get it? Tracking? Okay, track with me. I'm going to build a case here and we'll knock this out of the park for you guys. We're recording, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, terrific. You guys, who's ever watching, this is for everybody. Follow along with me. I'm going to bring this thing home for you guys. When that battery is fully charged, Oh, we're ready to roll. Now, I used to have an electric vehicle. Drove it for three years. One of the best cars I ever had. It was awesome. When that sucker got unplugged and I was on the road, and I hit ludicrous mode. And the cops loved me. And I had to get off the ludicrous mode because I got tired of talking to cops. It was zippy and skippy and fast and powerful. But then I'd start watching that battery over time start to go down and down and down. And then it starts flashing and then the radio stops working and the heating and the air conditioning stop working and it starts to go into like survival mode and you're like, crap, I better get to a plug or I'm out. You're the power plant for your characters. This is, this is it. We are the power plant for our characters. Now, the majority of people that are listening to this right now and are in acting studios training or online training and you're, you have a desire to act, you're training your instruments. You could even be working at the craft while you're training your instruments. But what it is, is you're most likely living in a social system, a society, most likely a large town or a city. You could be in small towns or whatnot, but I'm talking about if you're actually in a place where you're pursuing acting work. And even if you're doing it remotely via Zoom, at some point you're going to have to fly in to some location that I doubt is Hoboken, New Jersey. Nothing wrong with Hoboken. I'm just saying it's more than likely 
a bigger city like Los Angeles, New York, London, Sydney, Brisbane. You're going to be into Chicago, maybe, Atlanta, maybe you're even doing stuff in Dallas or Kansas City or Miami. I mean, these are even smaller markets, but you're in a city. <clears throat> And when you are living in a conventional city lifestyle where you wake up with all the luxuries of electricity and plumbing and heating and cooling and blankets and fans, whatever the climate is, and then we go to the convenience of everything we need in the kitchen, it's there. And then we go into the bathroom that's, the plumbing works. It's all there. And we can take showers at any temperature that we want. And then we have all these luxuries of clothes and toys and tools and games and pleasantries. And if we're out of anything, we just go down to the super Walmart or the super Target or the super this or the super that or Costco. It needs no other name. It's like Bono. And we get whatever we need and we get caught up in these niceties of city life. Everything is there. It develops us a certain way with certain limitations as opposed to the raw organic nature of the animal because we are of the animal kingdom. We're just the sophisticated version of the animal. We are the mammal. We are the human that functions, that came from the dirt and is a, a being and why do you think we're so drawn to these shows like Naked and Afraid and Into the Wild and Surviving in the Wilderness and Living Below Zero and Survivor and all these things that we watch these people. Why? Because we take humans out of their cushy lifestyles and we put them in and then we sit on our comfy couches with our devices and go, oh, that's so interesting. Give me another blanket. You want to empower your power plant. And most people do not have the opportunity to go out and keep these instruments fully balanced and activated. Some of you don't want to. You're so inundated with all of the conveniences of a conventional lifestyle that you're not realizing you're not functioning at your peak performance. Now, many of you guys go out and do things. You go for hikes, you take ski trips, you go to the beach, and you break out to go do things, and that is awesome because that's innate desire to want to be connected to nature. You want to do that. And people are at all levels of it, from total plastic people that can't do anything outside of the conveniences of modern man. They just cannot function to your wilderness people and anything in between. You guys tracking with me? Can you think of the most conventionalized person you know, and maybe it's you? Can you think of the most wilderness type out there person you know? Maybe it's you. But look at that comparison. Now, what I wanna drive home is what this is all about. But before I do, I'm going to show you a little clip. We might have to throw the camera on it. I don't know how this is going to work. But this is a TV show from the 60s. And the show is called Green Acres. Hasn't been on the air for like ever. Okay? Anybody ever heard of it? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to show you the opening of this show, Green Acres. We're going to talk about it, and then I'm going to go back into what an artist adventure is and why it is so important to you and one week without an artist adventure one seven days without an artist adventure makes one week <laughs> you should be on artist adventures every day if you can so i want to show you this little clip it's a minute it's the opening of a tv show we got audio i hope no audio um it's on why do we get these technical things? Why can't I just snap my fingers and have stuff happen? Pull it out and put it back in. Turn it up. Countryside. 
shores. The stores. Fresh air. Okay, so it's a show about a couple where the guy has a, a yearning to get back to his roots and be on the farm, and she's a highbrow Manhattanite, and it's what life is like of them actually living on a farm and dealing with that. So you've got these two contrasting personalities, and they go to the farm, and they live in the farm, and it's just set up for great conflict. It was a hit show. I grew up with it as a young kid. And maybe that's why they're talking about this. Heck, I don't know. But here's, here's what I want you guys to understand is the importance of what you are responsible for, not only to yourself, but to the people that you're trying to sell yourself to and ultimately the people who are going to experience you as characters. Now, a lot of you guys have heard about deep, heavy method acting training, where method actors will actually go out and put themselves through excruciating situations just to get into the raw nature of the craft. Now, arguably, and I say arguably, these actors are often considered the more serious actors. They're the method actors who really have the true living experiences. Now, I'm not saying that that's the only way. It goes back to the big saying from Sir Laurence Olivier when he worked with Dustin Hoffman on a movie called Marathon Man, where Dustin Hoffman showed up to craft services looking a wreck. And Sir Laurence Olivier says to him, what the heck happened to you? And he said, I haven't slept in four days. I've been running and staying up. I haven't done anything. I'm, he says, why are you doing that? He goes, I'm getting prepared for my scene. I'm getting prepared for the character and the work. And Olivier looks at him spreading his butter on his toes going, why don't you try acting? <laughs> you know, so there's that too. But my point is, when you stop and you think about why do certain actors go to these great lengths to get into the real intense feeling of dealing with what it's like to actually be these people that they're playing, it costs those battery packs that fuel cell, those, those, those center systems, the central headquarters has to be activated in such a way that they're able to fully express the life of these characters. If this makes sense, grunt. <clears throat> it's good for you to grunt. And see, what tends to happen is then you start staying away from the things that make us human. And then we start carpet, carpet, car compartmentalizing people as weird when they show a lot of expression. When they're outside of the box, living free, and we go, oh, well, that's just Bobby. He's a, he's a character. Well, that's Susie. She's just strange. Because they're experiencing more of what it's like to be them. But you see, conventionality comes in and says, no, this is how we're supposed to be. And then we start getting trapped inside the boxes of our own selves. Acting training is about getting you to express and to explore emotion, mindfulness, body, internal awareness, external awareness. We truly develop superhumans, meaning you're living life at the fullest. Now, when you're living in the second largest city in the United States at time of taping, Los Angeles, California, just over the hill from Hollywood, subculture within subculture within subculture within subculture and then we start getting into all the trendy things that the internet tells us we ought to be like and the new gadgets and gizmos and outfits and things that we have to have now we're starting to become completely conventionalized and that's okay for the regular person but it doesn't make for an, a very interesting human being to empower interesting and creative characters Artist Adventures came from me going, this is, these are not the most interesting actors, people that are just living their regular lives, playing your video games, no offense, being on your social media, no offense, just sticking, spending time on your computer and just doing things in your own little worlds, 
going from shopping mall to grocery store to this thing to that thing and thinking that just because you want fame, it, it should happen to you. It doesn't work like that. The point of the artist adventure is I, I went, well, how can I help actors understand that they have to feel? They have to really hear, really see, smell, taste, touch, feel, and have an awareness. Because that's what makes a brilliant actor. When we stay in the conventionality and the confines of our routines and our systems, we have to break out. And breaking out is to go on an adventure. Now, it comes up at times, well, coach, what are artist adventures? And do you really have to do this? And do you have artist adventures, by my definition, creating this stuff? is you getting out away and unplugging and experiencing more of you. So it's asked, can you do these with other people? If you're able to do that, but you shouldn't always do them with other people. It's okay, you can do them with a group, but you've got to get away on yourself. And this isn't like Easter and Christmas and Thanksgiving people that you just do this once a year. You should be doing these often, like several times a week and nothing less than a week. That's crazy. Now, of course, it's going to be a crazy week when you're doing an intense shoot. You can't get away. You're working great. You're, 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 you're activating your instrument. But the adventures for you to truly get into these places, I'll give you the definition. I happen to prep it for this talk. By definition, adventure, an unusual and exciting, typically hazardous experience or activity. I've said for years, before I ever looked up the definition to adventure, that my artist adventures are often very, very dangerous. This definition says they're hazardous. Now. Is Coach Banks saying go out there and threaten your life? Maybe, but no. I'm just saying you can't stay in a, in a comfort zone and expect to grow. You have to get out. And I just personally have found that life is more full and more exciting as it gets closer to death. I've been in a war zone. I was a documentary filmmaker in the war in Bosnia, Herzegovina, and Serbia when they were having a civil war that made our civil war look like a picnic. These people were slaughtering each other, ridiculous, in 1994. And I went over there with a relief group and I shot a documentary. I was on the front line. I, I was so, I'm a little bit of a, an adrenaline junkie. I was so jacked up. All I wanted to do was get to the front line. And they kept telling me, no snipers. You can't, the snipers are there, you're gonna get popped. People were dying right and left. I was traveling and hanging out with, with, with uh, reporters from the BBC. Their Jeep got blown up. We lost our translator, she died, she was killed. And I just wanted to get behind enemy lines and I finally was able to break away from my relief team and get somebody that got me behind enemy lines. And they're telling me, you put that camera down, you're going to get shot. And I'm shooting out of the rear view mirror. I'm trying to get, I was just a nut job because I was so alive. Now, I'm not telling you guys to go to a war zone and threaten your life. I'm just saying you have to look at the equation. That's where life is amazing. Adventure, by definition, not mine, says it's somewhat hazardous. It's got to shake you up to some degree and get you to feel and experience you outside of your comfort nature. If this makes sense, grunt. <clears throat> Thank you. So it's just like investing in stocks. If you sit down with a financial manager, one of the first things a good financial manager will say to you, what is your, anyone know? Goal? Budget. Risk yeah. tolerance. What is your risk tolerance? Do you need safe mutual funds or do you want to be on the edge of day trading? What can you go to sleep at night with and be okay? What's your risk tolerance? And it's the same thing with artist adventures. 
you find your risk tolerance and you push it just a little bit further. An artist adventure could be somebody in your family that you have all that unspoken dialogue, you know, the, the, the non-versations. You just don't talk about the two-ton elephant in the room and you have to see each other a couple of times a year or whatever it is and you don't ever say anything. And you, you know something? I'm going to go on an artist adventure and I'm going to confront Stephanie. And you say, Stephanie, we need to talk. Ooh. What's up here? And the hair on the back of your neck is like, like a porcupine, you know, and you're talking to it and you're like, I don't know where I'm going and I'm on some other force right now, but I'm talking to Stephanie. That's an adventure. It's somewhat hazardous, not life threatening, but somewhat hazardous. It's you adding weight to the bar. It's you going out and going, how can I make this more interesting and more challenging? And when you do an artist adventure, the way you do it is you have to schedule it in like you would schedule in anything else. Let me ask you right now by a quick show of hands, honestly, even if I can't see you, just do it. Get your body activated. How many of you, if you had an important physical doctor appointment of some sort that was set and it took you forever to land this thing, with your doctor, with me, it's like my dentist. I gotta plan these things six months out. It's crazy, and if you miss it, <laughs> it's another half trip around the sun before you're gonna get it again. You know what I'm talking about? Some of these people are hard to land. If you had a trip that had a, 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 a trip, an, a, an adventure, if you had an appointment that you had to make with your doctor, how many of you would do everything you can to make that appointment? Just yeah, of course. You're going to make that doctor appointment. Why? Because you either got to fix something that's going wrong or something went wrong and it's got to be taken care of or you want to make sure something doesn't go wrong, preventative. Whatever it is, while you're going to see that doctor, you're in there because you, you're, you're looking after yourself. Well, if you're listening to me, the chances are you are some form of artist. And if you're some form of artist, you have to look after your creative genius. And if you're not tending to your creative genius, then your creative genius is getting weak. It's like not giving any nutrients to your soul. And now you're putting this high demand on a creative that's not developed. Now, I've seen this happen a lot. I do my best to stay physically active. I'm no, uh, by no means some wilderness guy. I live in the second largest city in the United States and I run businesses and this is what I do. That's why I do artist adventures and I work out and I do my best to get out and stay healthy and for a guy of my age, I think I'm doing better than most. I will get in situations where we have to help a friend move and we'll be slugging furniture up and down stairs and in and out of trucks and then they called one of their city friends. One of their conventional guys. By the time the guy even steps up onto the platform of the truck, oh wow, you go up a flight of stairs with a freaking couch in his hand and he's like, oh. you know, like, Joe, just maybe you ought to just sit down. They're, they're not prepared for it. They're not trained for it. They haven't conditioned for it. Even the little exercises we did at the beginning of the class, some of you guys were like, whoa, wait, ho, oh, here's my muscles going. But if you train all the time, you're like, let's do this thing. Artist adventures are designed as a tool and an excuse to keep you keeping your creativity, your creative genius, your internal inspiration, your soul and your spirit activated and functioning at its peak level so that when you have to turn it up somebody's here they don't really do anything they got to go in for an audition they turn it up they go here somebody's up here they're working out doing artist adventures they got to turn it up boom they go here this isn't brain surgery people just like you would not blow that appointment with your doctor you need to set an appointment with yourself and go, I'm doing an hour artist adventure today. I'm going to do a two hour artist adventure. It's the weekend. I'm off. I'm doing a four hour artist adventure. And you set the time in your calendar and you go from two to six. I'm in my artist adventure. 
from 11 to 12. I'm in my artist adventure. And in your artist adventure, you mix it up. If you put a Google search with my name in it, uh, uh, in, in, into the search deal, uh, I, I used to blog artist adventures every week. I'm writing a book. It's called The Actors Freeway. Free things actors can do when they're not in, in class or on set to continue to build their instrument. And it's loaded with artist adventures. It's not finished yet because I built the act course. <laughs> we, we got that finished and we're building other things. I got a lot of things going on here to help you be the best possible, possible version of you. Now, you guys know I don't just coach actors. I do business coaching. I'm working with an herbal doctor right now as we speak. I also do, oh, is this not, did I die? How could you die right there in my performance? Technology, see the back, no artist adventure. See what happened? I can't show you this picture. I'm conditioning one of my guys. I'm, I'm, doing, uh, I'm doing performance training with him and I've been working with him. We started off with getting him into cold showers and then getting him into, he's an outdoors guy, and, and then getting him into getting outside with less and less clothes on. And he just sent me a picture today. He said, I did 4.1 miles in 25 degrees, no shirt. And he showed me the picture. He's, he's running snow all over the ground, and now he's got his shirt off. I said, great, we're going to shorts next. It's, it's like that he's an endurance guy. That's, that's what we're doing now. Look, it's about making you the best possible version of you. Now, if you're sitting here going, I don't want to do all this stuff, fine. Your characters won't be as interesting. I mean, that's just the way it is. Look, I don't like paying taxes. I just don't want to go to jail. You know, I mean, it's just the way that it is. It's just the way that it is. I was talking with somebody uh, uh, about, I think it was this morning, I was talking to somebody about, they were talking about, um, you know, the life and life's challenges doing the things that we do. And I said, you know something, these conversations aren't even worth having anymore. Because with everything, you're going to get the top side and you're going to get the bottom side. Just neutral buoyancy. Just figure out how to balance everything. And I heard something really, really fascinating that had to do with depression. Because a lot of people suffer with depression. And I'm always looking for key insights into really powerful people talking about depression because I follow a lot of very high functional uh, people. And, uh, you know, I periodically get into these places where I'm like, uh, I'm going, coach, you shouldn't be like this. You're an empowerment coach. You can't get, I know, I know. I got to get out of it. I got to get out of it. And I'm always dealing with it, but I want it to go away. I don't want it to be there. I can get out of it pretty quick, but I want it to go away. And I heard something just this week that was really fascinating that depression comes with the package of creative gifts. If you're a creative and you live in these heightened creative moments, you can't have those without that. That has to show up and be there and that needs to be managed. And I went, Nirvana, it's okay. It's part of the package. I just don't want to hang out there. So if you're listening to me and you deal with that, know that if you're a creative, it's just part of the package. It's like when you buy something and there's this like Apple's notorious for this. You guys ever buy an Apple product, right? You go to buy the Apple product and you just want the, you want the computer or you want the iPad or you want the phone or you want the little, the mini, Right, the little iPod thing, that little thing that holds all the songs that you can clip on your lapel. I, I use that in the gym. You know, you, you want the product, but when the packaging, when, it, when the box, it's like you got this cellophane and you, it's, it's wrapped so great. And then you got these great boxes that look amazing. And you're like, I don't want to throw this away. And then you open it up and there's another box inside it. You guys tracking with me? And then you open that up and then it's sitting in this cloth case and it's in the, and you pull it out and you open it up and then it's wrapped again and you're like, oh. And all this stuff you gotta go through just to get to your product. That's depression and creativity. I just thought I'd throw, there in there, throw that in there because I, I was like, wow, this is awesome. It just kind of comes with it, manage it. It's not gonna go away, it's never gonna go away. You just manage it. You make it work better. Artist adventures will reduce that because you're going out and you're exploring more of yourself, you're bringing yourself to a heightened level. You're learning to feel more and experience your emotions more. That's the whole point.
Oh, my phone is now going crazy. Okay, well, what's happening here? All right, let me see if I can show you this picture. Ah, it's got power. I don't know why it shut down, but let me show you this quick picture. It just came in. This is cool. This is 25 degrees and running in 25 degrees. Let's see, where's the camera? Uh, it's either the webcam or camera six. 25 degrees. There he is right there. All red. He's all red out there in the snow, huffing it, huffing it. I'm proud of him. There he is out there in the snow. Look at that. And we're going to shorts next. But anyway, that's what he's doing. Um, so guys, to wrap this up for you, my job is to coach you, instruct you, empower you, direct you, and help you to be the best version of yourself, to do this creative art form, and also to have the best possible functioning life you can. Because if you have a hell of a career, and you're effed up, and nobody likes you, everybody hates you, go eat some worms, life is just sucky. What good is it? And the person that gave me the information about depression coming with the package is a person that has to deal with depression on and off as an industry celebrity billionaire. So don't think you getting a position, you getting a show, you getting a movie, you making money, you living in the house, you doing this, you doing that is going to make everything great. It doesn't. You have to be great. And it's your job to be great. And if you get great now, as you build, it's going to be easier than trying to salvage a beached frickin' boat. <laughs> Look at this yacht, and it's crashed. Great, what do we do now? So, artist adventures, guys. In the big picture of everything, all of them should challenge something else. Now, I fall prey to this. I have certain muscles I like to work out. It's like going to the gym. Guy's gonna go to the gym where let's do chest. Yeah, yeah. Who doesn't like doing chest? Come on, right? But do you really wanna work forearms and calves? No. You know, but you got to, or you start looking like a weird pencil thing. You know, if, if you come on, you've seen these people. You got to have proportion. And so your artist adventures should be challenging different things. Working on site to go out and just watch things. Put on noise-canceling headphones and just watch. Don't talk for an entire artist adventure. Go out to the produce stand and just feel fruit and vegetables and textures. Smell. I love that. I walk through a shopping mall and I just smell. Just smell the different smells. And every store has a different fragrance and a different ethos that they, they're creating. You know, you, you, you play chess with yourself on an electronic chess game online or something, and then you, you, you try to make it a little bit more challenging. You go out and do hit, hopscotch because you haven't done it since you were four. You do things where you're not worried about who's watching, and here's a really wild thing, and I'll end it on this. When you get into these safe, safe places, that are open wildernesses for you to explore, you will start to feel your own set of boundaries and parameters coming in on you. And you wanna try me on this? Here's what I, I'll tell you to do. You go to one or two places. You go up into the mountains, which living in Los Angeles, 15 minutes, you can be in no man's land around here when you know where to go. You go to the beach. Get a piece of the beach where no one's there, right where the water's coming in, and you do it into the waves, or up in the mountains, you do it into the canyons, and you just yell, and you scream, and you sing at the top of your lungs, and you praise, and you open it up, and you're gonna feel like, whoa. And it's like, what's the hole? There's no one around. It's the self-inflicted boundaries, and that's what we push out. And every time you go on an artist adventure, you put, go, ah! oh, wait, there's no one here. Ah! Whoa. Wait, what are you? Ah! 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 And you, it's like, wow, some of you are like freaking out just by me doing that. It's called expression. 
expression. And you do it whatever way you do it. But if you're not pressing those parameters, you're not helping anything out. You can have all the line lifting, cold reading, and script analysis skills in the world. You come into the room and you're just like an old dried up McDonald's french fry in the back of the car that was left there from four weeks ago. You're a McDonald's french fry, but nobody wants you. <laughs> trying to make a point here, guys. I'm serious about this. It's part of my teaching. If you study with me, if you think I have anything to say of any type of validity, I'm driving this point home because if you're not doing artist adventures, you better convince me of how it is you are exploiting your instrument. How are you, in the, in the words of Viola Spolin, when asked, what is talent? Viola Spolin, the grandmother of improv, she said, it's the ever increasing of your capacity to experience. Here, taste this. Oh, I don't like that. That's one capacity. Here, taste this. Mm. Okay, that was a lot of things. That's the difference. When you touch something, do you really feel it? Guys, when you get in front of the cameras, your job is to stop time. Because the people that watch us are living in regular world time. If you're living in regular world time, nothing happens. If you show up, you get people's attention because you're stopping time and you're activating your senses and you're living more in a moment walking across a room touching a chair than people do when they go to Disneyland for $150 for the day or whatever it costs to time a table. That's your responsibility as a creative artist. And if you're able to get it another way, let me know. And I know a lot of you guys do, you hike. You dance. You, you, you go out and you have physical activities and sports and hobbies. You, you take walks. You, you paint. You draw. You do these things. Brilliant. I want all of you guys to do it and to continue to do it so that you stay a creative being that's continuing to evolve in creating and not just a regular functional person that just goes into survival. Are you a creative or a consumer? Are you just eating the content or are you producing the content? We're producers, we're creatives, and our job is to do just that, okay? <clears throat> Artist adventures. Seven days without one makes one week. 